Hey, 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 hey. Welcome in, everybody. We're going to give a couple more minutes for everyone to get their notifications. And we're going to get this party started. I hope you got your teacups ready. We got some things to talk about. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Just sent out the last of the notifications for the live stream. So uh, hoping that we will get quite the audience this evening. And uh, 
I'd like to say to everybody, welcome to Connecting the Purple Dots. Because that's what we do over here. All right. So we got the background music. Uh, let me change this banner over. Oop. Take that one out. All right. Getting this party started. Well, I hope that everyone is doing well and lovely. Um, I don't know if any of you were on Rumble yesterday evening. Uh, if you were, then you would have caught Connecting the Purple Dots. Uh, I joined the, uh, the MJ Death Hoax crew over there. And uh, I don't know how many hours we talked. Uh, but we went into a lot of good information. If you're a Michael Jackson fan or, uh, you know, and or Prince fan, uh, it was it was pretty cool. We, we we covered some stuff. We found out some stuff. We did a little a little research. So. It was a cool little live stream, but uh if you haven't uh, checked out Rumble, uh, the link is in the description. Feel free to uh, set yourself up on Rumble if you haven't. If you're already on Rumble, um, you know, check out the conversation. And uh, on tonight's menu is an update regarding the legal battle over Prince Legacy LLC. I don't think uh, anyone has given any updates since the petition was put out there in, uh, in an article online. In fact, uh, Connecting the Purple Dots actually wrote or sent the, uh, the writer of that article an email about providing an update. And uh, wouldn't you know it? These darn things always seem to happen. They don't respond. <laughs> they just don't respond. So, um, no response from that reporter or article writer. Um, so, Connecting the Purple Dots took the liberty of reaching out to one of the channel supporters and subscribers. Uh, also, a Patreon uh channel supporter and subscriber um so they actually live pretty close to near let's just say they have access to going over to the chance record of delaware but the only problem with coordinating that was i did a little more digging before i called in that favor because I didn't want to send them over there and then they couldn't get what we needed. Well, I'm glad I did because I saved them a drive. Um, and wouldn't you know it? <laughs> the exhibits for, for, for y'all, for those that have, uh, seen all four parts, uh, of, Connecting the Purple Dots, reading through the petition that Lundell McMillan sub submitted or uh, sent to the Chantry Court of Delaware there. If you read through all four parts of that, not read through it, well, if you read it or if you saw all four video parts. Now, keep in mind, my people on Patreon had that last month. I thought I would share it with the people on YouTube at this time so that now we can all have this conversation. So everyone should be caught up on what that petition states and understanding that that petition had several exhibits, exhibits I believe A through E were the exhibits. Well, in the research that I did, I'll turn that down a little bit. In the research that I did, I did uncover that exhibits A through E, wow, they're sealed files. <laughs> I 
wouldn't wouldn't you know it? They just have to be sealed files. So, um, with that, I guess I can pull. Yeah, we can pull that up. I think I put that. Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Um, in my present, let's make sure everything is good here. Everything is good. I'm going to share the screen with you folks. Mm. Well, where is it? Okay. There it is. As you see here, this should you, you should see a tweet on screen. Let me center that a little bit. I sent this tweet out on Twitter or X. I don't know what to call it anymore. I don't even know if you call them tweets anymore. Um, but I sent this tweet on X out to, and, uh, you know, as you can see here from connecting the purple dots at Lundell McMillan at Charles F. Spicer, and it states lots of sealed confidential filed documents there in the Chancery Court of Delaware. Even an expectancy agreement. I'm sure it goes with the expectancy interest and not the vested interest. Hmm. Trying to hide something, are we? L-M-A-O. Well, went back a couple weeks later and would you know it? This cat, oh, how do I see it here? Oh, you know what? Is it there or is it there? Let me see here. Mm. What do you know what I had noticed that... Mr. Charles F. Spicer Jr. has blocked connecting the purple dots. And for those on the Patreon, I believe you guys got that. Um, so I wonder why he would have the nerve to block the dots. Hmm. But anyhow, just to let you know that the whole shenanigans over at Carver County probate court with all the sealed files and all of that has now followed all the way over to a Delaware court. We got sealed files in the Delaware court. Now, why do we have sealed files in the Delaware court? Well, for those who went through the four parts of reading, the four part video of me reading and reviewing the petition, um, you will you will see there that there is some uh, great info. Oh, I can't put it like that. I guess I have to pull up every one. Give me a second, folks. Um, there we go. All right, we're gonna share it. Yeah, that should be it. All right, so y'all should be seeing what I'm seeing. There we go. Very nice. Now let's just bring it down. And if you recall, like see here on page two, when he submitted this petition, he also submitted a copy of the LLC agreement is attached as Exhibit A. Um... A copy of the expectancy agreement was attached as Exhibit B. A copy of the joint management agreement is attached as Exhibit C. Uh oh, let's go back. 
Okay. And a copy of the purported amendment LLC agreement was attached as Exhibit D. And a copy of the written action was attached as Exhibit E. Right? So A through E, however, are all sealed documents. Now, what you folks should be asking yourself is just why is there an expectancy agreement? Okay. Let's pull that back up. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's even better. Actually, let me stop. Let me start. Uh, Windows. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> there is an expectancy agreement. Now, for those that have been following along and for those who may be new here, uh, I do see the channel has taken on uh, some new subscribers. Um, so we appreciate y'all being here. Um, whether you're here on the live stream or when you listen to it later, it's all good. But for those that don't understand what an expectancy agreement is, the definition in legal ease or legal terms, an expectancy agreement is what it states. But what it has to do with is expectancy interest. Now, Keeping it simple, let's say you got, for example, a married couple. A married couple has both have both living, both parties to that coupleship, to that marriage living, have expectancy interest for each other, right? The husband's going to have an expectancy interest of the wife. The wife is going to have an expectancy interest of the husband. Now, unless either party writes one of the two out of their will or their trust, they each have expectancy interest. That expectancy interest simply means in the event of an action that would take place that would cause their death, they would be expected to inherit... what is left behind by their deceased spouse. Now, how do you get from expectancy interest to vested interest? Well, simply, an action has to take place that results in either party's death. That would be the triggering event. Somebody's going to have to pass away in order for that expectancy interest to become vested interest. And whether or not they had a will or a trust or how it's laid out there, if they've got to go to probate. And keep in mind, even if you have a will or a trust, you're still going to need to go to probate. Okay? You would just simply go to probate and say, well, here's the will. Here's the instructions. All right, we're done. Here's the trust. Here's the instruction. We're done. Okay? So it would take an action or an event that will result in one of the spouse's death in order to convert the expectancy interest to vested interest. So as I've said many, many months ago, when we discovered and uncovered that the heirs, the six recognized heirs began to sell their expectancy interest, right? Uh, Alfred, Taika, Omar sold their expectancy interest, which is the interest that they could expect to receive upon the action needed to take place to cause someone to become deceased. So the three of them sold their expectancy interest to who? Primary Wave. Sharon, Noreen, and John did not sell their expectancy interest. Instead, they formed a separate entity called Prince Legacy LLC, and they registered it there in 
the state of Delaware to keep it from the public prying eyes and scrutiny. In at the end of July 20, what was that 2022? Yeah, the end of July, early August 2022, Judge Eads in the Carver County Probate Court put an end to the Prince Estate there in probate. They closed it up. And in the legal terms that they used in the documents that you can find at Carver County Probate Court, they used the terms of we are going to disperse to separate. Oh, how, what's the words they used? Um, they were going to they were going to disperse the expectancy interest to uh, the word escapes me now i gotta pull out my little info here successor entities right so according to what i've read judge eads had asked them to create successor entities so that he could disperse and administer the assets of the estate to two successor trustees. I'm sorry, to two successor entities. I say again, two successor entities, one being Prince Oates Holdings, which was the expectancy interest that Primary Wave purchased from Alfred, Omar, and Taika. Prince Legacy LLC was the other successor entity that was formed by Sharon Noreen, John Lundell McMillan and Charles Spicer. So you have to understand the words that they're using successor entities. Now, anybody that's familiar with a trust, there's language in there that talks about a successor trustee, right? In the event that your named trustee cannot perform their role or their duty or they pass away, then there is a successor trustee. So you now have a successor. What was it? Ah, I keep forgetting my, my, my verbiage here. Um, they're going to transfer the assets to successor entities being prince legacy llc ask yourself why would they need to transfer assets and those assets being expectancy interest to successor entities how why would we call them successor entities and not owners A successor to what? A successor entity to what? To who? Meaning, who is the entity that they are succeeding? Make sense? In order to be a successor, there must be an entity already there. Holding ownership. And in the words from the article that we read regarding, uh, let me see if I can pull him up. Um, in the words of one Judge Eads, uh, let me see if I can find that article. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There. It's going to take a minute. Ah. Hold on. We're we going to get it. Yeah, 
might have to go back even to another file because I don't see it in here. Hmm. Okay, I don't see it there. Let me go to another file. Um, that was that one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm, let's go to the archive stuff. Uh, where is it? Let's try this one. Nope, it is not that one. We're going to have to go to an older archived file. I have to find. There we go. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I don't keep that. Okay, let's go to an older archive file. Man, this stuff's not working for me today. Where is that Judge Eats article? Nope. It is not working. Um, let's see if we can find it here. Anyhow, there was an article that came out about Judge Eads. And for those that have been following along for a while, you know the article that I'm talking about. Uh, that article uh, quoted Judge Eads as making the statement that Tyka, Alfred, John, Sharon, Noreen, Omar, primary wave, that none of them were owners of that estate. So in order for there to be a successor, again, there has to be there has to be someone already there that they are potentially succeeding. Who might that be, folks? Hmm. I really want to find this article now. I hate when things are not where I put them. Huh, interesting. I'm going to try this one one more time. If I wasn't looking for it, it'd be right in front of my face. Come on, where are you? Hmm. All right, I'm not finding it right now. Um, so we'll get back to what we're doing. Let me pull the live up. Okay. So in order to have a successor, there must be someone there already, right? Just like a trust. You have a trustee and then you have a successor trustee. So these are successor entities, Prince Old Holdings and Prince Legacy LLC. These are successor entities. So if they are entities, if they are successor entities, then they are succeeding what entity that is already there?
the one not mentioned by Judge Eads in that article that was quoted. Um, tell you what, let me see if I can Google it. Mm. Estate. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, that's not it. Yeah, nothing's coming up today. That's crazy. Okay. So I, I hope to find it and then I'll pull it up on screen when I do. Um, Kind of hard to multitask and talk. Um, but, you know, this is how we did it yesterday. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to bring to y'all's attention is paragraph 26. If you own something, why would you need an expectancy agreement? As it states here, the expectancy agreement delegated management authority over SNJ's personal and collective interest, not ownership, interest, to McMullen and Spicer. Specifically, the expectancy agreement provides, in relevant part, in order to facilitate management of SNJ's interest, not ownership, interest in the estate, this agreement delegates all management decisions relating to SNJ's interest, not ownership, both assigned and unassigned under this agreement in the estate to McMullen and Spicer subject to a written management agreement entered into by S&J and McMullen and Spicer. If no written agreement is executed, this agreement grants management authority to McMullen and Spicer. The signed expectancy agreement was submitted to the probate court on March 12th. 2021 and subsequently approved by Judge Kevin Eads. Let me see. Mm, boom. Wouldn't surprise me if that news article has gone missing because I'm going to show you guys something else that has changed since we last looked at it. Uh, that is coming up. Uh, hmm. Can't seem to find it on Google. All right. So why do you need an expectancy agreement? If you have ownership. Okay. So so that's what we'll. We'll question. So let me shut this down. Come on back now. Um, so that should have been the. Another big giveaway right there. If you listen to. If you listen to which video came out, that was the video that stated, um, I think I figured it out. If y'all checked out the video that was released about three weeks ago called, I think I figured it out. What I'm saying in that video is simply.
Prince, as we know, was married twice. His first ex-wife being Maite Garcia. In an interview that we can no longer find on the internet, but you can find it here on Connecting the Purple Dots, Maite makes the statement that when Prince and her were together, he had a will. Now, since we know Prince and Maite divorced, I'm sure Prince would have gone back and removed her as a beneficiary of his will or trust or whatever he had going on at that time. He then goes and marries Manuela Tessalini. I'm sure that he may have, he may have not put her name in as a beneficiary. Upon their divorce, I'm pretty sure if that was the case, he would have removed Manuela Testolini from the uh, from the, the beneficiary paperwork of any will or any trust left behind. I think the part that got, I feel as though the part that got left out was, well, after he divorced Manuela Testolini, he didn't have any offspring, no children that we know of or recognized legally. Um, so he really didn't have a beneficiary to put their name in, in, in place of the two ex-wives, right? So, you know what? We'll, we'll leave that blank for now. Let me, let me think about what it is I want to do. And who I want to put or potentially leave, you know, the residue of my estate to. And I think that may be one of the things, or should I say, I feel as though that is one of the things that got overlooked. Now, Pepper, I see you in here. What you saying? You say, why does an owner need expectancy interest? Exactly. And why does an owner need someone else to manage their affairs to the degree that they can't even hold a formal damn meeting? Nah Boom. All right. So um, I think that's one of the things that got overlooked. I think, or I feel as though, Prince never went back and put in a beneficiary for his will or his trust or both. So I believe, or I feel as though, the whole probate show was simply to establish who are the legal heirs and who are going to be the beneficiaries of this estate since none were named. Allegedly. As I feel as though this makes sense. Because what did we see get accomplished in the. What almost seven years of probate. Was that hold on. Am I, am I, is my time frame right. Whatever time frame it was from 2016 to 2022. So for six, six and a half years, almost seven years. OK, what did we see get accomplished? Only thing we saw the probate court do was identify. The heirs. We saw. Special administrators. Come in and account for things. What else did we see get done? So I believe, or I feel as though, the probate court was just to establish who would be the identified heirs. Okay, so now that we have identified heirs, I feel as though there is a trust out there and that trust holds the ownership to all things Prince. And until the action needed 
to invoke the trust, your successor entities being the owners of expectancy interest are simply waiting to succeed. It's it's just that simple. So that's why you don't see the words ownership in any court document. You don't see the words ownership uh, in, in any of the filings by Lundell McMillan. So, I mean, like, what's going on? We can only make sense of the things that we know of. I'm not saying connecting the purple dots knows it all, but this is what makes sense. Um... I'm still looking for that article from Judge Eads. If they took it off the internet, I know I've got a copy saved here, which, trust me, I uh, this far in now, five years of connecting the purple dots, we've seen a lot of stuff go missing. Um, so screenshots and saving stuff is paramount. Man. I bet as soon as I finish this live stream, it'll, it'll pop right up. Be right there. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So I hope that everybody is following along with what I'm saying and understands what expectancy interest is versus vested interest versus why do we now have or why are we now seeing that there is an expectancy agreement. Don't make sense now, but it will soon. What song is that from? Hmm. Man, where is this thing? I'm still looking. Okay, I can't find it, so we're going to move on. Um, yes, that's from a song called June. <laughs> All right, so... Let's move on to giving you guys an update. I'm, I don't want to beat the horse to death, but I'm pretty sure you should be able to understand the difference in expectancy interest and vested interest. All right, so let's pull up the updates. Come on, where are you at? There we go. Boom, boom. All right, so now pull up his boom. We were able to get into the Chancery Court of Delaware's filings uh, thing. And let's see, how can I make this bigger for y'all? I don't know. Boop, boop. Does that make it bigger if I make it bigger on my side? Okay, so it's just a screen thing. Um, okay. Backing that down. Okay, I got the chats. Okay, what you see on your screen is the uh, case history, basically a case history search. Uh, you should be able to see it's Delaware Court of Chancery Civil, Civil Action. 
It is the case type declaratory judgment. Uh, the judge is McCormick Kathleen St. Jude. Case name is L. Lundell McMullen versus Sharon Nelson. Uh, filed on January 5th, 2024. Uh, number of documents filed 52. And let's start off with. Let's see. Hmm. There we go. All right. So we'll start off at the beginning. This is uh, if you see down here. Let me let me see if I can see what y'all are seeing. OK. If we see down here at the bottom, January 5th, 2024, Lundell McMullen uh, files his complaint with three or more defendants. Um, this potential. This particular file itself was confidential, verified complaint for declaratory judgment. Uh, we have the plaintiff's motion for an expedient, an ex I'm sorry, an ex expedited proceedings. Uh, motion, plaintiff motions for a status quo order. And that's what we're going to give you an update on today. As you see here, the exhibits, right? Listed as confidential exhibits A through E to verify complaint for declaratory judgment. So we can't get our hands on these exhibits at this time. Um, so everything else is kind of just supplemental paperwork uh, and proposed orders, right? All right, so the next thing that followed there was on January 8th, 2024. We had a, a supplemental information sheet, amended supplemental information pursuant to Rule 3A of the Rule of the Court of Chancery. Okay, so there must have been something else that he added on. on again, on January 8th, there was a summons instruction uh, that was sent out. Uh, January 10th, we have the issuance, the issuance of summons on uh, January 10th. Also, we have summons directed to nominal defendants, Prince Legacy LLC. So that would be Sharon, Noreen and John, as well as uh, Brianna and Alan Nelson. Um. Let's see here. So then on the 10th, they came out with a public version of this verified complaint, which I believe is the same link that was in the original article found online um, that you were able to see uh, the petition for the complaint from Lundell McMillan. All right, so that was the 10th. So we come over here to the 12th of January. Uh, we have an entry of an appearance. So this looks like the lawyers who are working for Sharon, Noreen, Brianna, and Alan on behalf of the trust of John Nelson. Uh, so they enter their appearances. Then we've got a stipulation proposed order. Stipulation and proposed order governing uh, governing uh, briefings on plaintiff's motion for an ex expedited proceeding and motion for a status quo order. Uh, let's see. Then the 18th, we have we see the judge has granted the stipulation and proposed order governing briefings on plaintiff's motion for expedited proceedings and motion for the status quo order. Now, for those who don't understand what status quo means, when I read through the four parts of the petition, Lundell McMullen and Charles Spicer were asking for the status quo meaning Everything stays the way it is in all of the agreements, meaning that Lundell and Charles Spicer would still remain 
the managing members of the LLC. So this meeting that took place on the 20th of December that Lundell and Charles did not attend because they had canceled the meeting and we're going to reschedule it. We're going to reschedule it because of holiday travel. Well, Sharon, Noreen, Brianna, and Alan had the meeting. Hold on. No, no, no. Sharon, Noreen, Brianna, I believe, had the meeting anyway. And they went ahead and basically voted Lundell and Charles Spicer out of the managing member positions. And that's what they have been operating on. But as we can see here from reading Lundell's petition, they can't even hold a formal meeting. They can't call for a formal meeting. If you remember that tweet that Sharon sent out that got everybody going when she stated, we have no control, we have no input, we have nothing. Well, this petition from Lundell McMullen solidifies that. And now we know why she come up with this tweet. Because for people who own something, allegedly, they have no control over what it is they own to the degree where they can't even call a formal meeting. So Lundell has had to submit this, uh, what's it called again? Um, oh, where did I leave off at? 19, okay, da 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 The stipulation of the proposed order governing briefings on plaintiff's motion to expedite proceedings and motions for a status quo order. And then it was granted. So meaning whatever Sharon, Noreen, and Brianna were, thought they were operating on from the meeting that they had that Lundell and Charles had canceled to reschedule means nothing. So if the judge has granted the stipulation and the proposed order governing briefing on plaintiff's motion for expedited proceedings and motion for status quo order, Lundell and Charles are still the managing members of Prince Legacy LLC. Sharon Noreen, Sharon Noreen and Brianna remain just the members of the LLC with no control, no voice, no nothing. All right. So Lundell has won his first challenge to continue the status quo order as the managing members. Okay. So we'll continue on. We've got entry of appearances. These are all the, the attorneys coming into Delaware that are representing Sharon, Noreen, and John, right? Because Lundell's going to represent himself. Um, let's see. Certificate of service, proposed order, granting defendant's motion to dismiss. Okay, so apparently Sharon, Noreen, and Brianna have their lawyers put in a proposed order to dismiss this petition and let's see what it says here uh there's an order for dismissal okay so as we go up here to january 18th we see here there was certificate of service for defendants, so they were served, right? And then there's a proposed order denying plaintiff's motion for an expedited proceeding. So Sharon, Noreen, and Brianna's lawyers did a motion to deny an expedited proceeding, and they've also done a motion to dismiss 
Let's see if it got granted. Uh, defendant's opposition plaintiff for expedited files. Okay, so here we go. On the 19th of January, of course, it's confidential. Order denying plaintiff's motion for status quo order filed under seal. Wait a minute. Proposed order denying plaintiff's motion for status quo order filed under seal. Plaintiffs. Okay, so that will be Lundell McMillan. Okay. Then we have... Oh, these are just files that they're now making confidential. That's why we can only read what this is. Exhibits 2012 through 22, defendant answers briefing in opposition to plaintiff's motion for status quo. Defendants answering briefing opposition from plaintiff's motion for status quo. Same thing. Uh, answering briefing, same thing. Okay, so now we're going to flip the page. And we'll come down to January 23rd, 2024. And we have plaintiff's reply in further support of their motion to expedite. Um, January 23 or January 23rd. Uh, confidential exhibits A through C to plaintiff's. Uh, reply brief in support of their motion status quo order. Um, confidential service to plaintiffs. Okay, then we've got plaintiff's reply brief in support of motion for status quo order. All right, then we have a letter on the 24th of January, letter to Honorable Kathleen St. Jude McCormick from Jacob M. Perone in closing two chambers copies of plaintiff's reply in further support of their motion to expedite. Okay. So then we come to the 25th of January. And as we see here, uh, Judge St. Jude McCormick, the order has come down. The judge granted the proposed status quo order on January 25th. And that's what leaves Lundell and Charles Spicer still in place as the managing members. Now, this is while all of this court litigation stuff is going on. Does not mean that this is over. It is not. This is just in the meantime, in order to continue to manage the business of Prince Legacy LLC, adhering to the original agreements, Lundell and Charles Spicer are the managing members. All right. So now let's see here what's above that public version defendants opposition to Plaintiff's motion for expedited trial or expedited proceedings, excuse me. Um, then you've got judicial action, motion to expedite for status quo, uh, telephonic oral argument and ruling of the court, status quo order ent entered. And then we have public version, defendants answering brief and observation, opposition to plaintiff's motion for status quo. And plaintiff's reply, further support for motion for expedited trial. And then we have January 30th, public version is out there. Plaintiff replied to brief in support of motion for status quo order. Um, then we have the telephonic oral arguments and ruling by the court on the plaintiff's motion and status quo. Well, we already know she's granted that back on the 25th so this is just a history doing the case file search um unfortunately going through the system that the state or the the court system of delaware wants you to go through these individual documents are very expensive so i'm happy i did not ask the friend to the channel to go into that to go to that court clerk there in delaware and get all of these filings because 
it would have costed a pretty penny. Um, so what we will do, let me let me shut this down, right? What we will do is continue to monitor the case and any news that comes out about it. But at this point, Lundell McMullen is getting what he wanted. He is still the managing member along with Charles Spicer. And we will continue to go through this court process and see what comes out on the other end. But in a message to the party that was named in that petition, my unlicensed legal advice and just general advice was to basically, unless they have something showing that Lundell and Charles Spicer haven't been doing their jobs as managing members or something that is showing a, a detriment to the business of Prince Legacy LLC, they might as well just sit back and collect their checks, save their money, and wait for the expiration dates on these agreements. Because keep in mind, in reading Lundell's petition, Delaware has a law on what needs to be followed in LLC agreements. Okay? So they have agreements that have been signed and dated, and these things were agreed to. So unless the other party, the defendants, Sharon, Noreen, and Brianna, have sufficient evidence to call into question the, the manner in which Lundell McMillan is managing that business, Prince Legacy LLC, along with Charles Spicer, as far as I can see, it's a wrap. Lundell just wants the court of Delaware, the, the Chancery Court of Delaware, to let Sharon, Noreen, and John know who the HINC is. The HINC, however you say that. Uh, <laughs> um, who? And when you have this in a court, if Lundell's going to win and the judgment comes down, if he wins in this court, that judgment and order is going to come down ordering Sharon, Noreen, and Brianna to adhere to the agreements that they've signed. That includes the uh, Prince Legacy LLC operating agreement, the expectancy agreement, and the management agreement between Prince Legacy LLC and Prince Oats Holdings. I told you guys. Lundell McMullen is there for a reason. And it ain't got nothing to do with him trying to take something that don't belong to him. Now, everybody's got to get paid for working. And obviously, Sharon, Noreen, John, and his beneficiaries, Brianna and Alan, obviously didn't have it to pay. So they gave up some percentage um, of their expectancy interest. And I believe that percentage coming out of my conversation with the Michael Jackson death hoax crew I believe that percentage is about 10%, roughly. And I'm going to say that, and I'm going to have to find the link now. Um, let me see if I can find this link. Because according to the articles that we, that was covered in the live stream last night on their channel, 
it has been reported in these articles that Primary Wave owns 10% of Michael Jackson's catalog. And I'm going to see if I can pull that up. Hmm. And going to have a hard time pulling this up. Um, February 9th. Let's see what this is. Oh, we had so much fun on that on that live stream yesterday. Um, I can't seem to find nothing that I want to pull up here today. Um, how can I? Hold on, folks. Ah, never put it on screen yesterday. Okay, so I can't find the link to the articles. Um, maybe it's on Billboard. Let's try Billboard. It's on a million. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Here we go. Got it for you. Coming up. Boom. Share. Uh, boom. Boom. All right. Now, I know I just saw it. There it is. All right. As you see here, it says sources indicate that Sony, that the Sony deal also leaves in place primary wave stake, which is believed to be about 10% of Jackson's publishing assets. Boom. And one thing that we did discover when we looked at these different articles, what they were all saying different things about the Sony deal for Michael and this 600 million. And what we were able to kind of put together was Sony is allegedly buying well, what they're reporting is Sony is allegedly buying 50% of Michael Jackson's catalog, right? Well, this can't be true. And, and here's why. If Primary Wave owns of Michael Jackson's catalog in whatever capacity that is, then there's not 50% left for Sony to buy, right? Because you would have 90% left. Agreed? So if you have 90% left, then Sony's only buying approximately 45% of Michael's catalog in whatever capacity that is. Now, one of the things that we were able to understand through reading the articles, and keep in mind, folks, these articles are written by journalists and news reporters. And they're getting their information from who? They're not getting their information from just anybody off the street, right? They're getting their information from somebody who wants this information reported. It's just like TMZ situation, okay? Um 
when celebrities want a public event captured, their management, their PR, uh, their marketing team, somebody's going to make that call and let TMZ know where and when they need to show up and what it is they need to capture. There's nothing different here when it comes to these articles. These journalists or writers are getting their information from what we discovered in one of the articles that were reviewed last night was from two anonymous sources. Now, who are these anonymous sources? We don't know. So you got to kind of take what we're reading in these articles with a grain of salt but what we know as reported it states primary wave is said to own 10 percent of jackson's publishing assets which leave 90 (coughs) percent so if sony was going to buy half of what remains then they're really only purchasing approximately 45 percent Okay, so those are the things that that you have to figure out. Um, Let's see. What else was it? Uh, The articles were so different that one of them spoke to actually what Sony was buying. And Sony was buying not... It spoke to that Sony was getting half of Michael Jackson's publishing but that they weren't getting any publishing that was Michael Jackson music they were getting half of what Michael owned of other artists publishing hmm which is how it reads so Michael's selling off the publishing of other artists that he owns back to Sony, according to that article. But we know, based on what is written, there's not 50% of Michael's publishing to sell if Primary Wave owns, has a 10% stake in it. There's only 90%. If you're selling half of 90 You do the math, it's 45, approximately, allegedly, right? So putting some thought into all of that is what we were able to make sense of last night. Um, Let's see here. What else did we want to cover? Okay, we're kind of giving you guys an update on the... On the Delaware case, we've talked about the 10% that that Primary Wave owns and why I believe that 10% is probably what they gave to Lundell and Charles Spicer. Now, one of the things that I had to to text Ms. Pearl about earlier this week was uh, something that I saw in another YouTube video short was the fact that Michael Jackson's co-executor of his trust being John Branca. Do you know that Michael fired John Branca at least two times? John Branca was, was last fired by Michael in 2003. John Branca is back as the co-trustee of Michael Jackson's estate. So for all those people who was in an uproar because Lundell McMillan was back and Prince had fired him and escorted him out the building, well, Lundell McMillan is back. Just like John Branca is back after being fired not once, but twice by Michael Jackson. 
Então, I told you before, all lawyers, all attorneys are not created equal. They all have expertise in different areas of the law. And when you get real good at it, it don't matter how mad your client gets at you. If he want to fire you and then realizes that he needs you, he will hire you right back. We have an example that Michael did it and now Prince has done it. What a coincidence. Hmm. And a bigger coincidence that Lundell was Michael's attorney. Oh, my. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, let me see what were the other points that I wanted to bring up today. Um... The only other thing, the only other thing new for me is I can't, I think I shared this on, yeah, I did share this in the community tabs. Um, regarding King James. Do you know, I was, I was in my kitchen washing dishes, listening to Dane Calloway. And this cat blew my mind. I mean, I knew about the Jesus thing. Right? When it was discovered that his name wasn't Jesus, because the letter J hadn't been invented yet, it wasn't part of the English alphabet yet, and that his name was Yeshua, You know, I accepted that. Makes sense. But when Dane pointed out the fact that everybody knows about the King James Bible and that the person King James, that couldn't have been his name. It couldn't have been his name because King James, let's see, King James was born June 19th, 1566. He was born in Scotland. He was the king of Scotland, England, and Ireland. All three are English speaking countries. The letter J was not introduced into the, the English alphabet until 1629. So his name couldn't have been James. Mm. The letter J was actually invented or created in 1524 and it became a part of the Italian language not the English language the Italian language so how could his name have been James so as you can see here the name game has been played for centuries Hmm. Prince Roger Nelson. Prince Rogers Nelson. Hmm. This ain't a new game. Obviously. And I and when Dane said it, I was in here screaming. I'm like, oh my god. The very book. That so many people talk about the King James Bible and all of its revisions.
Let me see here. Now, I saw something. Once I finished my dishes, I jumped on the computer. Um, I should have queen. I should not have king up there. Um, let me pull this up on screen. I'm gonna tell you how they how they got us, and this is why I say we we got to question everything. We cannot just sit around and um expect to think that the things that we were told um the things that we were taught about history about life are true and correct pull this up here okay that's it I came across this here. I don't know if y'all could see it or if I, I don't think I can zoom in. Um, it says, why was King James called Queen James? No disrespect to anybody, but what it states here is King James, he was indeed sometimes referred to in this way during his reign because he was not particularly secretive about his homosexual relationships. And my mouth just dropped. I don't know if it's true or not true, but this is what's written. This is what you can find on Google. And so now I have to question King James and the King James Bible, but he was not particularly secretive of his homosexual relationships, but yet his name is on a Bible which does not condone homosexual relationships. Just why would that be, folks? <laughs> so I found that to be quite damn interesting myself. Have we all been set up to live a lie? Don't be foolish enough to believe. At this point, I'm at the point where I don't believe nothing. Nothing that I've been taught. Okay? One times one. <laughs> that math ain't mathing. King James ain't working. Okay? His name couldn't have been James. Pepper, nobody's saying God is a lie. Trust me. I know God. I seen him work. I seen him in action. I seen him show up. If he didn't, I wouldn't be here having this conversation with you. But what I'm saying to you is, how can somebody who wasn't particularly secretive about his homosexual relationships be putting out a Bible that does not condone homosexual relationships. That's what I'm saying. It's a contradiction. Let's see this right here. I learned this about King James many years ago from a Jehovah's Witness. King James is also the author of a book about demons. Just saying. Oh my. 
cray cray. Question everything, folks. Everything. At this point in the state of the world and the time we live in, you'd be foolish not to. All I'm saying. All right. I want to make sure I covered everything I needed to cover. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor for question and answers, Q&A. Um, if you got questions, come on live. I just put the link in the chat. Let's discuss it. But this is like, it's buck wild. It's crazy. All right. So we're an hour 30 into this live stream. It is now Q&A. So if you got questions, let's uh, let's hear them. And if connecting the purple dots don't have the answer, he's going to go research the answer. OK. Um, but that's about I believe that's all we have tonight. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's all we have tonight to report. So y'all have an update on the Delaware court situation, court case there in Delaware uh, between Lundell and the heirs. Um, we talked about Michael's $600 million deal and how that is looking like it's truly breaking down between multiple articles. As they all say different stuff, but we've come across the fact that Primary Wave may own 10% of Michael Jackson's catalog. Okay. Don't know if that's 10% of... 10, does that 10% include Michael Jackson music or does that 10% include other artists in that catalog that he owns? So... That's what it is. Um, I want to say hello to Pepper, of course. Juanita's in the house. Terry Deck on deck. Uh, Miss L. Hey, first time I caught a live. Um, well, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. I hope we've uh, enlightened you a little more on the topic of Connecting the purple dots and everything that we research, uncover, and discover. Um, Aja Reed. Thanks for uh, stopping in. Behind the mask. Let's see. Who is this behind the mask? Okay, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, <coughs> Um, yeah, I have to see that there. Oh, well, wait a minute. All right. Won't let me. Oh, well, it is what it is. Let's see. Redacted status is in the house. Music energy is in the house. What's going on? All right. We got someone named Paul Mike. Welcome to the mic. What's going on? Hey. What's going on? I, I tell you what, hold on. I gotta I gotta shut this music down so we can hear you. Give me where is it at? Give me a second. Boom. Shutting that down and let me put you in my headphones. Boom. All right. Mr. Paul, you there? Yeah, it, it's me, Agent M. I had to switch my YouTube page. Okay. What's going on, Agent M? Oh, doing it great. What you say is like very true because everybody got to do their research. 
I researched mm -hmm. a lot. I researched so much. Like the uh the death the death at the day that Michael Jackson died, right? They they took a photo of his possibly death picture on a bed on a gurney, but it's fake. It's Photoshop. Okay. It wasn't no belly button. And you can tell they try to blend in the color, but they did not work, did not do so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miss 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 Pearl lay, lays all that out for it for everybody. And just like Prince, they show some pictures of Prince, but it mm -hmm. was all it's it was fake. I saw it on Facebook earlier. Mm-hmm. Him laying, supposed to be laying there and laying down, all the stuff is messed up. And laying by the elevator. Mm hmm Yeah, everybody's familiar with that by now. They should be. And it should be, but it, but it's it, it's everybody gotta do their research. Yeah. Everybody well, should. Yeah, because some people are blind to see. Well, some people just don't want to see it. Yeah, you know? they they they, they want to accept the person's gone, but he's not. But they not. Mm -hmm. Just like just like I posted the thing up in his Elvis group, right? Mm -hmm. About Bob, this guy named Bob Joyce at the church in Arkansas. He, he's a pastor at Arkansas. Now he's walked like Elvis. He sings like Elvis. He's looked like Elvis, but older. They say, oh, he can't be Elvis. He's too young. I told people, yeah. take care of your body. Take care of your skin. You're going to look great at your age if you don't take care of your body. Mm -hmm. Am but I right? We, but we know Elvis wasn't taking care of his body. Yeah, but he had to get away. Mm -hmm. And now he's a pastor at a church in Arkansas. No, nah, I mean, Elvis was 40. Elvis, come on, Elvis is. Oh, uh, trust me. I, 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 look, I do my stuff. Let me see. <laughs> Let's see. When was Elvis born? 1935, right? Mm hmm. So Elvis was born in 1935, right? Mm -hmm. mm, hold on here. I'm trying to get my stuff together here. Okay. Elvis would be darn near 90 years old by now. So if that yeah. pastor ain't looking like he's 90 years old, it ain't him. Yeah, it's him. Trust me. Go go look it up. I think I've seen it, but I think he he's looking a little too young for me to be Elvis. And take care of your body. Got stuff out there now to make you look way younger. <laughs> I bet they do. Not Doctor Nine Hundred Two One Zero. I know this. I know this lady. She's ninety and she look good for age. Mm hmm. All right. Wait. Wait. You? How old are you? And you look like that. Yeah, but I'm sure she didn't abuse drugs and alcohol any, at any time in her life where Elvis did. But he had to get away from all that. Get away, but the, the, the signs and everything, those those stay with you. No, he let God take over his body. Okay. God is a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. So if God calls you, you know you're calling, you gotta go to him. Yep. Just, just like I, uh just like uh well, uh Prince he faked his death for a reason. Mm-hmm. Because he didn't want to be controlled by the company. Gotcha. So I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Miss L says, why do you think Sharon and Noreen didn't sell their shares. Well, according according to Lundell McMullen's petition, they tried, but with the management agreement in place uh, and the operating agreement in place, it takes the managing members and a 100% vote before any of them can sell their shares. 
So that's why Sharon and Noreen haven't sold any shares. So keep in mind, you've got an LLC operating agreement. You've got an expectancy agreement. And you have a management agreement between the two LLCs. So according to Lundell McMillan's petition, Sharon and Noreen tried to sell to Primary Wave recently. Primary Wave turns around and calls who? Lundell McMillan. Because they have signed an agreement where nobody can sell anything unless they have a hundred percent agreement amongst the the heirs that hold the expectancy interest. I can no longer think or go by any understanding that. That they own something. They don't own anything. I've been saying that. Mm -hmm. They are sick. They are, they are, they are, okay, my bad. Scratch that. They are owners of expectancy interest as court recognized heirs. That's what they owned. And they are, um, sitting in a position of members of an LLC that is a successor entity to whatever the entity is that currently owns or has ownership. So, yeah, no, they haven't sold anything. Hmm. Um, do you think uh, Prince gonna play some new music? I don't know what they're doing. Um, as I've said before, I mean, Prince's fans are an aging demographic, so if they're gonna mm -hmm. put that stuff out, they need to they need to go on and get into putting it out and come up with some kind of release schedule that you know yeah. people are gonna you know go get it because. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so Miss L says, I mean, why didn't they sell when Taika and Omar sold? Because they couldn't they couldn't see through the purple the purple fog. Mm -hmm. See, they were probably operating of a, a under the premise that he he that he that he had an accidental fentanyl overdose they weren't going to sell out to no big conglomerate they weren't going to do that hey. so they didn't they didn't sell out they just signed it all away under a successor entity known as Prince Legacy LLC that is being run By Lundell McMullen and Charles Spicer. Mm -hmm. And I told y'all before, Lundell was back for a reason. So oh, there hey. you go. What you got? Oh, what else oh, you got? Oh, oh, you heard about that guy that Pearl put on her uh, Facebook, on YouTube, about that guy who said he was Prince Nelson. Yeah, I was actually about to go into that. Uh, o Orlando, uh, what's his name? Orlando Enox. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Now, now he's filed. Uh, just to give y'all an update, uh, he must be struggling with some I an, an identity crisis because now <laughs> he is suing. Um. Uh, what's the guy's Michael name? Yeah, he's su he's suing. Uh, hold on, I got John Branca. Yeah, he's suing John Branca, claiming Michael he is Jackson. now Michael Jackson. Yeah, he's suing John Branca. <laughs> yeah, John Branca claimed that he's Michael. First he said he's Prince. Now he's saying John. Now yeah. he says he's yeah. First he said he's Prince. Now he's now he's Michael Jackson. 
So I don't know. Uh, there's a court hearing. I was talking to Miss Pearl about this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, last week when it when when uh, I guess I don't know how she found out about it, but um, yeah. I was talking to her about it. And, you know, there's a hearing sometime in March. And I told Miss Pearl that you should probably go to the hearing and mm -hmm. you should probably print out the court documents from uh, Carver County and just to provide those to the defense. So, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. Last year he was Prince. This year he's Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I saw that. My girlfriend, well, I was asleep. My girlfriend told me. And I woke up. She's like, you know this guy think? He's, he, uh, you got to watch Pro Dream stuff. Like, what, 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 why? What happened? She's like, this guy claiming that he's Prince. Like, he keeps claiming he's Prince in the sky. They say he's they ain't saying, oh, he said he's, uh, now he's saying he's empty. Really? They gonna really believe this guy. They gonna really give this guy a time of day. Mm hmm. Yep. Well, I mean, no, I guess they're gonna entertain it, but I mean, if the defense is doing their homework, they'll, they'll, they'll know what I've just stated and, uh, be able to shut it down real quick. And the guy needs to be mental in the hospital. Mm -hmm. He's suffering some, you know. Yeah, he got, he got, he got some things going on. Maybe <laughs> somebody say he's somebody else. Mm-hmm. He, I was looking, trying to look up the guy. He don't got no YouTube, do he? You got a what? I was looking up the guy that claimed he don't got a YouTube, do he? Uh, that I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked for him on YouTube. Hmm. And that is strange. Yep. Yep. I don't know. Do you think? Do you think Prince is gonna give up his fans clues that he's still here? Oh, he already has. I've, oh, I've yeah. been I've been finding them for the last five years. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know. I know you did. I know you're great. Investigating. I know searching on any new pictures of him recent. How he looked today. Nah. Nah, we're not going to get that stuff. Because <laughs> I was like, I know they're going to. Mm hmm. Not going to get that stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. No, I don't think he's going to slip up like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. First, they, they first people thought uh, Prince was, was disguised as his sister. Right. You heard about that? Yep. What's he think of that? Diff different. I mean, look, anything, anything with makeup and, and all of that other stuff is possible, but... Um, I, I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just don't see it. No. <laughs> mm -mm. The body type is different, but I mean, yeah, you can yeah. put on a fat suit and all of that, but I I don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad the work that you're doing. Well, thank you. I try. I try to stay up on it. How was your Las Vegas trip? Uh, which one? That you uh, took. Uh, haven't been in a minute. Uh, that was the last. It was the last year live. This you see when he was at Las Vegas. Um, I mean, I'm always in Vegas. That's like my my second home. Oh. I'm there probably about four to six times a year. So. Yeah, I'm going to Vegas. All, all, now. all depends on what's going on. Somebody asked me if I went for Super Bowl. I was like, no, nah, that that stuff was way too expensive. Oh. Way too expensive. I mean, they had <laughs> the cheapest ticket to the Super Bowl <laughs> was six, seven thousand. The most expensive ticket I saw was fifty three thousand. Fifty three thousand. Yeah, and the uh, but the hotels were going for something like twelve hundred a night. Oh, 
that's not. Oh yeah, they they you have to be. Yeah, you you got to be one of them Rockefellers or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah nah. I, was, I, was, I I I mean you you can call you can call me Ocho Cinco. I'm I'm not gonna spend money on something that I could get for free and have a better view. I'm not yeah. doing that. On TV. Hmm. Huh? Oh yeah, on TV. Yeah. No, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I, I don't think, but you know what that proves. I mean, when you watch that on TV and you see the whole stadium filled up, and you know that the cost of those tickets mm-hmm. is there really a recession? Yeah, hey, you're right. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I want to spend the money like that. Or, or maybe it's just a recession for a certain demographic. Yeah, you're right. You're very right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, uh, about Trump on the come out to be a president. What you think about that? What'd you say? See him about what? What you think about Trump being president again? Well, unless somebody else intervenes, um, here's what I think. I think that the American people need to really open their eyes and realize that that this country is the definition of uh, insanity. Mm-hmm. Every four years, we repeat the same thing. Um, we, we go through the same voting cycle every four years and expecting a better outcome. And since I've been on the planet, it just hasn't happened. Hey, hey. So why are you going to go and repeat the same insanity again when you've already seen how both of these candidates are in their in the role of president. Mm. So yeah. when it when it comes down to what it what it appears to be coming down to uh a uh, uh, a Trump Biden election, right? Yeah. Um Why? Why would you? Why would you waste your vote on either of them? Because nobody was happy when Trump was president. Nobody's happy that now, you know, with, with what Biden's got going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why would you vote for either one of them? Yeah. My suggestion to the American people is, you should be looking for a candidate that is. Of the taxpayers, for mm-hmm. the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank yes, you're right. That's what you should be looking for. All of these poli- politicians, you got to stop doing that. You got to yeah. stop repeating the insanity every four years. The same stuff every four years. These guys are playing politics. They are not managing a country. Mm mm. It's very nice. And that they're not doing too good at it. Never really have. That's why I call it the this country's the definition of insanity. Everybody's doing the same thing every four years, expecting a different result, and it ain't happened. Yeah, it ain't never gonna happen to get somebody. No, so you 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 what what do you have to do in order to get the results? You gotta do something different. You think outside the box. So you need a candidate that is not a politician. And people might say, well, Trump's not a politician, but he ran under the, uh, not the Democrats, the other ones. I, know, uh, uh, I forget. Hmm. The Republicans, hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, he yeah. ran as a Republican, right? So mm-hmm. um, then he's a Republican. Why he couldn't run as an independent? Yeah. Right? I, 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 for me, I, I'm not voting for any politicians. I, I, I don't vote. I know it's the same result. If I, I don't vote at all. And I don't think that you should have to feel like, oh, well, you have to vote. No, I don't have to vote for the two parties that they're going to present. I I would rather write in my own name. Mm-hmm. That's what I would do. 
I don't vote for none of them. Mm -mm. Because if you're if if you're voting for the two people that have been problemed problematic in the last eight years, then you're contributing to that problem. And then asking, well, why? You know, asking all the questions. You're the one dis displeased. Why would you contribute to the nonsense by voting for it? Yeah, creating the nonsense. Well, there you go. Let's see. What's what's Pepper talking about? Hold on real quick. <laughs> Prince didn't participate in voting, so I don't either. Right, wrong, left. What is it? Right wing, left wing, same bird. Correct. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, let's see. What about those insane court antics in Georgia? Um, I haven't really caught up with that pepper all, all of the Donald Trump. All, last thing I know was he is being made to pay three hundred and some odd million dollars to the state of New York. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> he do get it. So, so you know, what's next? Uh, let's see. What's this here? The reason why we can't get anything done or not or nothing passed is not because of Biden, is because of the Republican Party. Well, it's funny because the Democrats say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I I'm not voting for a politician. Mm -mm. Well, Give me somebody of the taxpayers for the taxpayers. Yeah, and for the people, everything that this country does should there should be a benefit for the taxpayers, the ones yeah. that pay the damn bills. Yes, yes, one of these bills for the people, okay. by the people. That's it. Not going to rule, run this country to the ground. Mm -hmm. They're going to they gonna, they gonna run y'all in the ground. They're going to run the people in the ground. How mm -hmm. how How is America going to be the greatest country on the planet, but people got to work 8 to 12 hours a day or more <laughs> just to make it? Yeah, you're right. It's that's, the not, that's not great. It's the only people out there. Uh, but we got billions. Look here. We can't balance the budget so the government can stay open every every year, but we we, we can't take care of our own homeless problem, mm -hmm. but we got billions of dollars to give to a country we haven't had nothing to do with. Yes. Thank you. And people starving out there. You say you got you got a problem at the borders and, and people coming to the country illegally. You know what? I'm pretty sure the taxpayers' money goes toward a military. Mm-hmm. And the military don't need to be scattered out around the world. The military need to be right here at home. In America. Right? Taking care of, securing our borders. Mm-hmm. Securing our airspace. You're right. So the problems that we have, they exist because of politics. Politics? You got politics? All about politics. There you go. So my suggestion to everyone is go find you a candidate that's of the taxpayers for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Leave these politicians alone and anybody that want to run in either one of these two groups, leave them alone. Because some politicians are not that good. The politicians are mm -mm. not that good. Let's see. Music World Treasure. Your vote never counts. They are all placed there and are already chosen. They are actors playing a role. They are all high-level Freemasons. Voting is an illusion of choice. The world is a show. Agreed. Yeah, you're right. Well, sometimes... Sometimes you got to throw some tomatoes. <laughs> when, when the show ain't good. If it ain't a good show, some tomatoes going to get thrown. So stop. <laughs> stop feeding the hog. Mm -hmm. Stop voting for politicians. Y'all got the voices. Mm -hmm. It's, it's y'all choice. Like, yep. It's the people choice out there. About, if, if nobody cast a vote for Biden or Trump, how could they ever win and say your vote matters? You're right. It's the people choice, not the vote. That, that, that would expose the fact of the matter. Wait a minute. You're telling me 
Biden got no no public votes. Trump got no po- public votes. Well, how did they, how did either one of them potentially wind up winning? Mm-hmm. If you don't vote, so that would expose the fact that your vote means nothing. So why vote for either of them? Yeah, right. go find you a tax a a a a, a candidate. Of taxpayers for taxpayers. That's my yeah. suggestion. Yeah. And if if you can't find one, write your own name in. Yeah, that's just the point. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So you the only one for yourself and for the people. Yep. You know the saying: If, if I'm gonna do bad, I'm gonna do bad by myself. By myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, I don't need Donald Trump to help. I don't need Donald Trump or, or Joe Biden to help me do bad. And if I fall, I'm for myself. And there you go. Mm-mm. Yep. So what else you got there, sir? Uh, what else? I, I was working on some music. Okay. Yeah, I was working on uh my mystery album. All right. Well, when and you gonna have that done? Oh wow, uh, it's gonna take a minute. <laughs> okay. Well you let you let us know. I'ma let you know. Well my studio equipment is coming here. You my saw the what? My studio my studio equipment is coming to my house. Okay. And it's a mystery about it's like a mystery album I, I created. I'm gonna create it. So I'm gonna do the album cover for me. Very good, very good. Yep. Well, all right. You got any more questions? Anything else? All right. I just want to say uh, thank you for letting me join again. Oh, always. I'm always glad to talk to you. Yeah. Because you're very, very intelligent. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later. I appreciate it so much. You got it. All right. See you later. All right. Take care. Hey. Right. Bye. All right. So. It's just that easy to come on live, folks. Um, what's it, we're on two hours. I'm gonna give it five more minutes. Anybody got questions, want to come on and have a discussion? Feel free. Now is the time. Um, the link again is in the chat. And Music World Treasure says Prince was smarter than both presidents. I uh, think. It's because Prince is not a politician. So <laughs> when you're not politic and it kind of makes you a smart person, I believe, because we all want the world. We all want the country to be managed, not from if then situations, so to speak. Right. If I do this for this set of people, then I got to do this for this set of people. And then I got to consider doing this for this set of people. So nobody's upset that's not how you should manage a country right and you certainly shouldn't be 70 and 80 years old trying to run a country um that i don't agree so i definitely agree to term limits and i agree to um uh hold on here i gotta fix this i just saw it where did it go um hmm. Nope. Oh, there we go. Here we go. I can fix it. Wow, I just saw this right now. There we go. All fixed. Um Yeah. Basically, we, we this country is never going to get any better by doing the same things that we continue to do every four years. So got to do something different. Um, got to do. Things got to change. You want change? Change them. Do something different. Don't vote for no politicians. That would be my. General advice. And there you have it. So, um, okay, we got about two minutes and then we're going to shut this thing down unless somebody comes on and saves the conversation. Uh, If not, uh, just to recap, 
we have given you an update on Lundell McMillan's case there in Delaware. We have briefly talked about Michael Jackson's $600 million deal with Sony and the reported potential 10% that Primary Wave owns of Michael Jackson's publishing. Um, <clears throat> we have covered the difference in expectancy interest, invested interest, and asked the question, why is there an expectancy agreement uh, for Prince Legacy, for the members of Prince Legacy LLC? And looks like we got Mr. Irons in the building. Um, let's see here. Mr. Irons, there was there was a film, there was a film called Let I Be that never released because the actor that was playing a John Lennon impersonator, which is real life, the guy that was playing the role was a was in real life a Lennon. Don't know if I got that right. You might have to come on and explain that one, Mr. Irons. Um but welcome to welcome to the live stream. Uh, we just about to wrap it up unless we get somebody to come on live and save the conversation. Um, let's see. So, yeah, we've we recapping. We um, we talked about the update for the Delaware case in Delaware from Lundell McMillan. We've talked about Michael Jackson's deal and potentially that primary wave owns 10 percent of. Michael Jackson's catalog or publishing. Um, we've talked about the discrepancy between these these reports on this six hundred million dollar deal and the fact that Sony can't be buying fifty percent of Michael Jackson's publishing if Primary Wave owns ten percent of it. Uh, the number would have to be somewhere around the 45% range. Um, let's see. We've given you an update on Orlando Enox and his foolishness. Uh, we've talked about uh, King James <laughs> and the letter J and how his name could it, couldn't have been James because the letter J wasn't part of the English alphabet. When he was born in 1520, 1522, hold on. Uh, no, it wasn't 1522. He was born in 1566, okay? And heck, according to this, it looks like he died in, on March 27, 1625. So upon his death, the letter J still was not still was not in the English alphabet until 1629. So, folks, question everything. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. What else is there? I think we, we covered, covered a lot of ground this evening. So... All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and say good night to everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining. And for those that will be uh, listening to the replays, thank you all for joining. Uh, and the standard stuff applies. Make sure you hit that like button on your way out if you haven't already done so. Uh, if you have not, if you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, for anybody who, let's see, that's not it. Um, for anybody who's interested in joining us over on Patreon for more exclusive content and, and basically my, my Patreons get the information first. Um, the four part series of breaking down Lundell McMullen's, um, Petition there in Delaware that was on Patreon last month. So they, my Patreons, get the information first. Um, so if you're interested in late breaking updates and information, join us over on Patreon.
All right, Pepper, you have a good night. Uh, what's this here? Might be interesting to research Lou Taylor's interest. Lou. Lou Taylor's interest, involvement in musicians and their catalogs. All right, you got to send me an email and and uh, we'll chat about that one. Um, let's see. Mark's okay. Who is this person, Mister Irons? Great stream. Good night. Good night, Music Energy. Shoot me an email about that other info. Uh, again, make sure you hit the like button on your way out. If you haven't subscribed, do us the favor of joining and subscribing. Uh, if you want the latest breaking content and updates, it is on Patreon exclusively first. Um, and hey, you know what we do here. We, we, we do our best at researching and connecting these dots. And I think I've done a hell of a job doing so. Um, this channel is just over five years old and I want to thank everybody for their support. Uh, definitely thank my Patreons for their support and, uh, stay in tune and, uh, make sure you comment, like, share, and, uh, get involved and stay involved. Thank you for joining, connecting the purple dots on this live stream. And, uh, Hey, we'll talk to you real soon.